Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be taking a look through my collection of vintage comic book related paperbacks. So this is either paperbacks that are about comic books or in fact contain classic comics in reprint form, either in black and white or colour, that were published before sort of graphic novels ever became really popular. I absolutely love these. They're amongst the very earliest comics that I ever read and I think you'll enjoy looking through them as well. So without further ado, sit back, relax and let's get to it. Okay, so starting off, we've got this one here by Dick Lupoff and Don Thompson. Uh, Dick Lupoff actually did die uh, very, very recently, but he was a noted uh, comic book historian. And this is quite a famous book, actually, all in curl for a dime. Um, I've got an absolute dog of a copy here, as you can see. It's really been through the wars, but it's pretty rare over here. I don't think it's a valuable book per se, but it's uh, it's quite a rare one to find in the wild in the UK, which is how I found this. Um, dedicated to Otto Binder. Yeah, 1970, that one, and that's published by Ace. So these are in rough publisher order as we go through these. Um, so this is uh, another Ace one here in the corner there. And this is uh, Conan the Barbarian, Volume 1. Now, these reprint the classic Roy Thomas and Barry Windsor Smith uh, run, which was absolutely iconic. And it says the first three adventures. And uh, this is the format that you'll see in a lot of these, where they've taken the original comic book artwork, they've cut it down and put it across the paperback pages here. And I said this is long before the days of uh, full-size graphic novels. And this is how they did it. Now this one comes with a uh, little preface by Stan Lee. And uh, 1978 is the copyright date on that. Now that's not bad. And I'm hoping, to be honest, that most of these aren't going to need too much work beyond brushing of the tops and uh, polishing the covers. And in actual fact there, you can see like there's a, a mark there on the back cover. And that's potentially the sort of thing that we're looking out for today. And I've had these books quite a long time. Some of them are my original copies, believe it or not, and uh, they've never really been for the processor. If, in fact, in the sort of in the in the, the the sort of the light there, you can see that that one's covered in all something, either dust or I don't know, certainly dirty. And I think that's what we'll find with a lot of these today: is that inside they're okay, but the top edges and the um, and the covers have never really been looked at properly. Um, so I didn't have all the Conans. I think there's about six in total. That's the first three. If you've never read that original Conan run, oh, it's so good. Here's volume four. This one's a real minter. This just hasn't been read at all. But I seem to remember paying, uh, you know, about six to eight pound for some of these ones now. And that's sort of the going rate. Some of them even more. Some of the uh, obscure Star Wars ones are expensive. And we got a few other juicy ones to show you. This is the last Conan one that I've got. Once again, there's some like sticker removal mark and some gunk on the front. So these are very much going to benefit from having a good polish. But they're all pretty uniform, those. Um, and as I said, I don't think they went much past number six. This is uh, another Ace, an Ace Tempo. This is the Hulk. So these are the Incredible Hulk newspaper strips, black and white. And uh, these are really good. I've been reading the Spider-Man newspaper strips lately um, through Go Comics or Comics Kingdom. I can't remember which one it was. 1980, this one. And um, I'm absolutely loving them. They're so well uh, written. In fact, they're by Stan Lee, so they're, they're great. Um, here's volume two of the uh, comic strips which is cool more of the same and seeing these now it's actually made me really want to dive, <laughs> dive in and read them but i've got a video to make so i can't um these are still by ace and then tempo so ace and then tempo this is dc we're going over to now with wonder woman a few classic wonder woman stories these look like mid to late 50s possibly early 60s ones reprinted there in 1978 probably released on the back of the uh, wonder woman tv show world's finest so that's a uh, classic superman and batman team-ups always had a soft spot for world's finest great little uh, comic 
a bit jokey these days, um, but one I actually contemplated collecting at one point properly. This is nice. This is from Ballantine, and this is one of three. And sadly, I don't have the other two. Um, but this is the probably much scarcer UK edition, four shillings. Um, but this is a classic e EC reprints from Tales from the Crypt. All your favourite artists are in there: Wally Wood and Al Feldstein. Just brilliant, absolutely brilliant stuff. This is the third printing, 1965 great great one so these did uh, at least that one got released in the uk i'm not sure about the other two but uh worth keeping your eyes peeled for i've had this one for years and i've just noticed that the bottom of the spine needs a bit of re-gluing so we'll dig the print stick out and we'll soon sort that out so it's only a tiny bit so i'm going to use my flat-headed screwdriver here a little bit of print stick slide slide that into there don't need too much because there's only a little bit then we'll fold that down and i think we use just the right amount of glue there because it's not squidged over or anything go we're good right i think that's probably a convenient point point. Right, we've got one more here we'll just do this old one so this is uh, published by belmont belmont tower and uh, this is uh, a look once again at um superheroes introduction by joey c gale writer of superman <laughs> and uh, Tower Comics had their own complete line at one point and uh, these were sort of a cash into the uh, the 60s Batman TV show Camp and Crazy Action I think is what they call it so if we sort these into say three convenient little piles we've got my uh, trusty brush here and we're going to give these a their first brush down. Now this will be the first brush down that some of these have ever had. Now when I started filming, which I know I've only just started but there's no way I can get hold of it now, I forgot to bring one down um, and it's um, the comic book adaption to Star Trek the motion picture which was Marvel, a Marvel illustrated comic. So not the end of the world but there is one missing unfortunately but we can live without it. It'll be okay. I know it didn't need cleaning because I cleaned it when I got it, which was only last year. And that was actually the last one of these, the last sort of comic book related paperback I picked up, I think. What was that one? As I said, a lot of these are going to really appreciate a good polish, which is something that's never been done with them, along with a good brush here. all right fairly good start there right but man so these are british editions published by foursquare um there are equivalent american ones as well and these once again were released to cash in on the 1960s batman tv series craze they reprint classic batman stories now let's have a little look at the printing history. So this is Foursquare, which is which became the New English Library, printed in July 1966. It says reprinted before publication, which means it was already um, off to a, a good start. What a great cover that is, isn't it? And they did a few of these, and I believe I've got them all. This is Batman and Three Villains of Doom. Um, this is an original Batman novel by Winston Leon. Aha. Uh -huh. Looks like a bit of soiling there, a bit of damp maybe has got him. Quite fragile little books these. That was October 66. Yeah, not a great copy, but probably one I've had since I was a kid. These will really benefit from a good brush. Uh, Batman and the Penguin. Yeah, Batman versus the Penguin, I should say. Classic strips again in here. September 66 and I've got one more these are all the same publisher Batman versus the Joker 
because I'm Kerpow. Remember that in the TV show? More classic reprints. 1966, and there is actually one more. This looks like it's related to, yeah, the movie. So Batman versus the Fearsome Foursome, a novelization of the 20th Century Fox Batman film by Winston Leon. This is the novel of the movie, so a movie tie-in. Cool as you like. January 67. They're rather nice, those, aren't they? Very, very nice indeed. So what's this? This is also four square books. Um, and this is The Hulk, Volume 1. Appearing for the first time in paperback, The Strangest Man of All Time. Absolutely dreadful rendition of The Hulk on the front there. That is awful. A um, couple of spots there, which hopefully will come up with a bit of polishing. Um, oh, look, someone's um, taken the old folk tip to, to my copy here. Sadly, the rest of it doesn't seem too bad. Oh, it's got a little 25 pence in, which we'll grab. 1967. Now, I might have this one in the equivalent American edition, which was published by Lancer. But we'll see when we get to the, uh, the Lancer ones. This one's obviously part of my overall four square collection. But I try and keep all my comic paperbacks together. Um, and I remembered to pull the James Bond one that I've got out for your eyes only from my Bond collection. I just forgot the blimmin' Star Trek one. but not. And I remember the Star Wars ones as well. But hey ho. And this is album number two. A slightly better rendition of Thor on the front there. <laughs> Still quite a ropey old paper about this, it's not exactly fresh. But that doesn't matter because it's just a sign that it's been read and enjoyed, you see. And that's that's cool, you know. Now the one in the same series is number four, Amazing Spider-Man. Oh, these are great. Now We'll see the ones that I read as a kid in the 70s a little bit later, but for children growing up in the 60s who are a bit older than me, this is what you could have had if you couldn't track down the actual comics, of course. And they were being sold over here at that time, so I guess you just had to look. Here's an interesting one. It's um, The Avengers Battle the Earth Wrecker. It's by sci-fi author Otto Binder, who was a big comic book fan. Very, very nice. I believe it's a Steranko cover. Or is it Frank Frazetta? You know, it's been so long I can't quite remember. I wonder if it says inside. Does it say? It doesn't actually say who the cover artist was. I have a funny feeling that's a Frank Frazetta. Okay. Right. Now this is Lancer. So this is an American publisher now. And uh, this is the first volume of Spider-Man. So it's Spider-Man Collector's Um, His Origin is Exploits. Now, once again, sadly in black and white, it wouldn't be until the 70s that we started getting these in glorious colour. But even so, this is the original American one. And uh, very lovely it is too. And the stories are just the best. I see it's got a few, it's quite a little bit brittle this one, but it has got a few turned over pages. How very dare it, eh? How very dare it. Very nice that one. I remember seeing some mint ones of these in New York once at a show and uh, and not picking them up because I already had them. I remember the dealer in question actually had a pile of this one, which is the equivalent book, but for Daredevil. Mar Mighty Marvel Collector's Album, Origin of Daredevil, guest starring Spidey. And it's got the uh, tanned edges. And I suppose collecting comic book related paperbacks is something I've done literally all my life. <laughs> 1967. I've always loved them. Even though I've not got that many, I've always loved them. 
Here's the uh, Fantastic Four one. This really is in terrible old condition now. I've set my eyes on it. <laughs> but there you go. I used to really love the, the FF. And I still do. But I read the original story so often that they got a bit samey. There's a little five in the corner there, but it's in ink. So nothing I can do about that. But yeah, this one's just about hanging all together. <laughs> 1965. That one really needs to be upgraded. <laughs> and here's the uh, FF follow up Fantastic Four Return, starring Submariner. This is a slightly later one. Once again, got the inked edges. This one's miles better condition. Probably got this off a dealer or something. But I may have bought this one in New York when I was over there for the Comic Con in 1967. Brilliant stuff. So, God, these are really are great, aren't they? These I absolutely love them. I've got to say, let's give these ones a little wipe down. Now, I think they're going to really benefit from the brush off, and even more so when we get to the polishing stage. A bit of dust coming off here. Because these are really old paperbacks from my collection. They've never been cleaned. So they should all be looking all the better for it now. stuff next one on the hit list is another Lancer this is the Hulk and this one I think was a fairly a fairly recent addition to the old collection this is in, in nice nice condition at that as well yeah that's really nice that one I wish my Fantastic Four original was a bit better at this one I've had for a long time this is the Fear Eyes only movie adaptation so it was published by Marvel in comic book form initially. It's like a little limited series. I think it was a two-parter. Um, and then they've taken that and popped it into the uh, For Your Eyes Only book. There's uh, Roger Moore on the back there. And these are published by Marvel Illustrated Books. Um, yeah, published by Marvel Comics Group. So these are published by Marvel. They just feel just like a pocketbook, but these the, the pocketbook ones came a little bit earlier. But this is first edition from June 1981. There we are. And we've got a few in this series, all published as Marvel Illustrated Books. Um, this is The Avengers, Origin of the Vision. And unusually, like that Bond one was in colour, this one's in black and white, and I think they do, there is a bit of a mixture of black and white and colour. Chris City Bell. <laughs> okay, Chris, I'm sorry, mate, but your previous owner's name is coming out. I wonder if Chris City Bell is actually watching. If he is, drop me a line. But he wrote his name in quite firmly in pencil but thankfully he did choose pencil and not pen so well done Chris for that all right let's give that another try there we are the name's gone now 
and that looks all right. Next, we got another real favourite of mine. This is uh, by Jim Steranko. Uh, it's the movie adaptation to Blade Runner, the original Blade Runner. Fantastic stuff. Great film and a great comic book adaption. June 82. I'm imagining that that's quite an expensive book to find these days. Captain America. Cool stuff. Daredevil. They really are brilliant, these, aren't they? Just love them. Love them to death. The Spider Man ones and the Doctor Strange ones. I used to uh, really just read and reread and really pour over them. Just love them so much. Fantastic Four. It's the uh, original Spider-Man, Jack Kirby episodes, FF 48 to 50, Spider-Man 2, so together with Thor, Havoc and Man-Thing. So I'm wondering if these are from Marvel Team-Up, I don't think it says at the front, but you never know. No, but generally speaking, something like that, Spider-Man and Man-Thing. Um, there was a, a Spider-Man team-up title called Marvel well, Team-Up, and that was it. And here is Spider-Man, his greatest team-up battle. So, And this is, it's got the Flash on the front in full colour. So, as I said, they did vary slightly. So this one's got, um, Doctor Strange was there. So Doctor Strange, the Hulk, and Quicksilver. There we are. Brilliant stuff. Now we've got our first Star Wars one. So this is Star Wars 2, but there is another one. And it's the first one I think is scarcer. This one is still scarce, particularly in Britain, but it's not scarce as the first one. Um, but they both go for a fair fair penny nowadays. It's so like 20, 25 pounds, or the equivalent in dollars, 25 to 30 dollars. Um, that one's okay, but um, I wouldn't mind a better one. And in actual fact, a friend of mine in America has just found that very book. And I think hers is mint and she did offer it to me. So I'll write back and say, look, I've got it, but mine's not in great shape. Would you mind me having yours? <laughs> um, and X-Men, the first X-Men one we've seen. This reprints the classic giant size X-Men, which is uh, the introduction to the, the, the modern day X-Men team. Absolutely fantastic, iconic and a very expensive comic in its own right so uh, if you've never read that it's brilliant it really is excellent stuff and then moving over to DC this is a, a separate publisher now called Paperback Library I think we've only got the one odd one of this and this is Green Lantern and Green Arrow number two um, now I haven't got the first one unfortunately but these are just superb what a run this was this Green Arrow Green Lantern run really really terrific Absolutely loved it. Denny O'Neill, sadly missed. And yeah, Neil Adams did the art. Um, I met Denny O'Neill once. I did get a couple of bits and pieces signed. And look at that. Dedication by Carmen Infantino. How cool is that? That's a real slice of 70s nostalgia there. Now, and it's a little £2.50 to take out. When did this get published? First printing, June 72. Look at that quite early for these but I'm going to take out that little 250 and looking at how good that one is and remembering just how good this story is I think I'm going to have to try and track down Green Lantern and Green Arrow Volume 1 in the paperback library if I can find one at a decent price but I would imagine they're they're reasonably expensive but I don't know for sure right let's pop these into three piles I've just seen on the top of the James Bond one there, there's a 125. So I'm taking this out. I'm wondering if that's rubbable or if it's in ink. I can't tell. Yeah, look, it's not moving it. That's a shame. I faded it a little bit, but it, I think it's still ink. 
which is not ideal. But at least I've sort of maybe taken off the uh, brashness of it with this rubber. Yeah. Oh, well, not the end of the world, is it? The rest of the book's absolutely fine. And uh, when it's on the shelf, you can't notice it, can you? You know, so let's give these bad boys a, a brush off. Next, this is uh, published by Marvel Comics Stroke Arrow Books. This is a British copy of the Empire Strikes Back Marvel Comics adaptation. And boy oh boy did I love this when it came out. 1980, Wendy Nesbitt. Oh Wendy, you ruined my book. Ruined it by adorning your name inside. How dare you. Here's the uh, Marvel Illustrated for Return of the Jedi. That's a really, really nice sort of unread copy of that one from 1983. And then here's another copy of it, but this is um, the British edition at 125. And it's a Piccolo Marvel, so exactly the same book. Internally, just the British printing of it. Says this edition printed um, in 1983 by Pan Books, and Piccolo was a an imprint of Pan. Now we're on to the ones that a lot of people will remember, the classic Spider-Mans. This uh, is Pocket Books. These were the ones I loved as a kid, issues one through six, complete and unabridged. Look at that. Although the text is small. God, these were so good. These were the closest you could get to graphic novels back then. When's this one dated? Well, it first was printed in September 77. That's when I first read it. And this one here, although it's mint, it is a fifth printing, but I don't care. I, I don't worry too much about the printings. The main thing is it's a nice copy. Um, here we are, so back again. And this one reprints issues 7 to 13. Same format, same brilliant, brilliant format. And it's funny, I reread these stories recently and I still just love them to death. Fantastic. Lovely stuff. Then this is this is the Spider-Man newspaper strips. These are the ones I'm actually reading at the moment um, on Go Comics, the uh, online newspaper and Sunday strip depository and you can read these for free online now but yeah this is amazing spider and this is spidey number two i think these have all been collected nowadays but it's still nice to see them and it ran for a long long time didn't it and the stories are great i'm trying to see that doesn't appear to be contain the one that i read at the moment which is a, a dr octopus one and the hulk's just appeared in that which is pretty cool now this is a marvel novel now these are all pretty scarce uh in all truth be told, and um, 
they don't generally turn up. So this is volume four in the series, and I believe there's a there's a lot. There's at least a dozen. Um, this is number four, yeah, Captain America, and it is just a traditional novel as opposed to comic strip based. Pocket again, May nineteen seventy nine. Those hardly ever turn up. This is the other one alongside the Spider-Man one that I guess I just loved it to death. Absolutely loved it to death. Um, so, so good. And it's like the precursor. It's like a proper uh, graphic novel. Um, just looking for the print in history again. It just says 1978, so there we are. Here's the follow-up. Number, little number two there in the side, Doctor Strange 1 2. This one's absolutely minters, and this is classic Strange Tales reprints um, by Steve Ditko. Fantastic Four, issues one through six again. This is Wyndham, this is a, a British, British copy of this one. Really, really bad gunk on the front there which um, I shall give a clean up to in a moment we've got the Hulk one through six See the original Steve Ditko again the original six issues of the Hulk very very nice indeed April 78 so let's give these a brush Lovely. Okay, last little stack now. So we got some more Hulk. Um, this is that was the British copy of Hulk One to Six, and this is the American edition of Hulk One to Six. Um, both published um, in 1978. So it's just the same book, but British and American editions. Oh, here's another one in the Marvel novel series. This one's number six, Iron Man. June 79. Last little pile here. So we got um, Spider Woman. Can't imagine that had great sales, this particular one. Don't think the comic was any great shakes, to be honest. Here's another Marvel novel, number seven Doctor Strange. Lovely. Here's a Vampirella, Ron Goulart. Um, this is a British Vampirella novel. Very nice condition, that one, actually. Yeah, very nice condition, that. 1977. I think there's four of those, and they're all pretty rare. This is another one by Spear. This is the very first adaption of Star Wars. It's um, in black and white. 
but I'm not sure if this was one of the ones that was also, yeah, it also had a little bit of colouring in. But apart from that, it's a minter. So once again, I wouldn't mind getting another copy because of the uh, the colouring, but say la vie. This is one that was sent over by one of my Patreons, Chris and Julia Edwards. So thank you for that. It's the Superman story. It's published by Tor. And it's one I've never even seen before. It's just classic. I think these are uh, mid 80s Superman strips. Kurt Swan are uh, 1979. So uh, late, late 70s strips, but still lovely to see. Uh, one of my all time favorite comic book characters is Swamp Thing. Classic. Swamp Thing reprints there. Len Wine, Bernie writes and reprints. Bit of a tatty old copy that one. It's, uh, but it is a copy nonetheless. <laughs> Untold Legend of Batman. This was a nice little limited series. Reprinted here in black and white. This is also by Tor. 1982 that one. About the time the, the comic came out. This one's interesting. This is a Choose Your Own Adventure game book published by TSR, who were the uh, the role-playing game experts. And this would be, you know, you'd have your choice and then you could turn to 137 or go a different direction and you'd end up reading the entire book. A bit like the Fighting Fantasy series. Very, very scarce. Quite collectible. Um, it's the only one I've got in that series, but it's really nice, isn't it? Even the cover is fantastic, so good stuff. Now, I've got a few more bits, but they're not normal paperback size, so I'm going to get these um, brushed off first. I'm surprised actually that not quite as much dust has come off as I thought. Although I think a lot of these are really gonna benefit from the polish this time around, more so than a brushing. these and these are actually sort of digests more than anything it's called fiction illustrated um as far as i know it only ran for the trio of issues which is the three that i've got some great artists and names were included and one of them in particular is uh quite collectible because it is by top writer but mainly an artist, uh, Jim Steranko, which we'll have a look in a minute. As you can see they're pretty cool. A little bit more adult than your traditional comic. It's got a tiny little one pound inside. I just spotted, or well, one, maybe a pound or a dollar. This is the one that tends to go for the good money because of the Jim Steranko connection. A visual novel by Jim Steranko. He's one of my all time favorite uh, artists and he does do some great writing as well. Fantastic. So we give those three a little brush down. I know the Steranko one goes for about 15 pounds. So if you ever come across it, one to pick up. And the last one we got is just a little, big little book. Fantastic Four, I've had this one for a long time. It's got 10, 10 pounds inside, I'm sure I didn't, put, didn't pay that. But this is the 60s one. There's a few in the 70s that got published. There we are, and the, it would be a picture on one side and a little bit of story on the other. That was the trademark of like big little books. Now that one's going to be a little tricky to get my brush in, so I've got the uh, the toothbrush, and I'm just going to dig that into the 
top of the spine and when we start covering my hardback collection which I'm thinking I'm going to need to do fairly soon because I've got a few hardbacks that need cleaning up um, and so I'm going to start working my way systematically through them you'll see me clean quite a bit more and we'll be using some different techniques when we get onto the hardbacks so uh, look out for that at some point but I use this little toothbrush to get right into the top and bottom of the spine area and it just gives you a bit more precision although maybe not as vigorous as the uh, as the shoe brush there Lovely. Right, so that is all the books brushed and glued and any prices or names rubbed out. And now we got to go through them all again and give them a darn good polish because, as we saw, a few of them are looking slightly the worse for wear. So let's make a start. OK, so I've got a brand new cloth for today's cleaning. I'm just loading it up with a bit of polish to begin with and then we'll be on our merry way now this particular one there's not a, it's so poor condition there's not a great deal I can really do on it to be to be honest anyway so I'm not going to waste too much time because it's such a such a dog but it's absolutely fine to read and uh, ultimately that's what it's all about isn't it now the Conans on the whole were pretty good as I recall as we were going through these. So I don't think we're going to have a lot to do. But you can sort of feel if there's something not quite right on the cover with regards to dirt or dust or something because it just feels a bit different under the cloth. And uh, it should pick it up quite easy. This is one of the ones that was looking a bit worse for wear. And I think this has made quite a difference to this one. The colours seem more vibrant now than they did, that's for certain. And you have to think that at some point in its life it was uh, just stored in a slightly dusty environment, but that's much better than what it was. Looking good so far. So like a yellow back it does show up the dirt and fingerprints a bit more than usual mucky. We've taken quite a bit off that even if you can't really see it. Quite a bit has come off that. I'm actually going to put a little bit straight on the logo there. Which was 
particularly bad. Yeah, that's cleaned that up quite nicely. Lovely. All going swimmingly so far. <laughs> this one sadly had a bit of staining on it, this Wonder Woman one, but it's okay. I don't mind too much. It's not one I'm going to rush out and replace or anything like that, but um, in a lot of cases you see these so infrequently. You really don't want to turn any down in any condition. And that's always been my sort of motto with these. I thought, upgrade it if I find another one, great. But else, just grab it when you see it, because you don't know when you're going to see another one. And that is so true. At the moment. from the crypt pretty dirty this one Even on that little pile there, look at the dirt we've picked up. Pretty incredible. I often get asked what the Mr. Sheen equivalent is in America, and um, I believe it's called Pledge, which we did also have over here at one point. I'm not sure if it's still available in the UK, but Pledge is what you're looking for if you're in the States. Batman's was a bit rough so I'm keeping an eye out for that by looking at any sort of damage in the light see if I can pick up which one it was
this one is this one has some fairly horrible little marks off which I've done great splashes on the back but they both come off nicely yeah. see around there yeah, I think we got those as good as we could they haven't quite got them off completely, the, the marks, but better than what they were. And that's uh, what matters. Nice copy of this one. onto these uh, American ones now. And these ones with the all black front or back covers are quite tough to find in high grade. But also if you've got them quite nice they clean up really lovely. This 
is my dog of an FF. <laughs> Don't want to clean it too hard or it might be in bits. What a state. Don't look too hard. This is the second one. It's like a little bit of sticker removal on the side there. There we are, it's coming off now. It's gone. <laughs> Lovely. Very nice one, that. So I haven't actually, uh, figured out yet what's going to be next week's cleaning video. Um, I think we are due to do a penguin one, to be honest. Um, but there are some others to come, so I'm just having a little think. Um, I believe we could do... Um, I wanted to include books that I don't think have ever been done before, so we've got my Gore books, the John Norman Gore books, to be done. I don't think they've ever been cleaned, although they're in pretty nice condition anyway. Um, we've got my vintage Panther books, and also Four Square could probably use another going over. Lots and lots of Penguin series, of course, which we'll get to in good time. My albatross books definitely could use another going over. And I've got a couple of books in there that need repairing, which are going to be maybe dedicated. I've got two rare albatross Agatha Christie books that um, what I'm going to try and do is get the covers reproed, but they need to be recreated by a friend of mine who is a book designer. And uh, I'm going to ask him, I'm going to give him like a blank template and ask him to match the fonts and what have you so that we can recreate these Agatha Christie ones. Then I would all need to just take the covers off, repair them, and uh, replace the bits that are missing, bits of the spine and things like that. I think it's going to make an absolutely fascinating video, and one which I think you'll uh, enjoy watching. So I'm going to do that. I have thought about a couple more archive videos. So I did do one which was uh, cleaning up a, a vintage penguin bookcase from the 1950s. And I also uh, had to recreate a label for it as well. Now, I think that would still be of interest to this channel. So I think if I get caught short and I've not had time to film a new cleaning, cha uh, cleaning video for this channel, that will be my next sort of fill-in. It will be uh, one from the archive and it will be uh, where I restored or cleaned, really, a 1950s penguin bookcase. Which is what I've been after for a long time. And it, did, it was quite nice condition, but it still needed a clean. And importantly, the label, the manufacturer's label on the back had been removed. They don't tend to last very well on those and I was able to replicate it and replace it, which was really cool. Wow, this one had a lot of dirt on it. careful sometimes with these because you can overcook it and then you're uh, and you don't really want to do that 
so you can cause a rub and then a bit of the cover actually come off and that is destructive and we don't want to do that all we're doing really is taking off sir at this point is taking off like surface dirt and grime that let's be honest these books are some of them are 40 50 years old now in fact some of them almost 60 years old so we have to bear that in mind when we do this sort of a job hard to believe that some of these Marvel books are that old, but they are, these 60s ones. Back spot there, which is coming off lovely. There we are. That's why I'm glad to be doing these, because it's picking up all manner of dirt that's never been looked at before. Making the books really real min mint ones minter and uh, VG ones a little bit better. If you've not gone over to my other channel do please take a look i do a monthly book pickups video which uh, it's all the new books that have come my way all the new paperbacks they all go through a cleaning process and i talk about what's been happening with the channel and what have you Thank you. 
these have really benefited from a, a decent polish. Lovely, so sadly we've only got one more stack. Right, last little wedge now. Oh. It's made me want to go and read some of my comic paperbacks again. <laughs> But that's all right. It's only a couple. I'd like to get that other green arrow one, I really would. Haven't seen how good that other one is. But yeah, so thank you very much everyone who's actually subscribed to the channel. It does make a huge difference. Um, as I film this, I think we're on about 760. So that's not bad, is it? You know? Um, obviously I'm hoping to get to a thousand quite soon in the next few months if I can so do um, hit the subscribe button if you've not already um, it just helps YouTube promote my videos a little bit more across the net and as I mentioned earlier do please check out my other channel Jules Burr collections and unboxings will find me although if you go into the search box and just type Jules Burt paperbacks or Jules Burt Star Wars you're likely to come across me without too much trouble at all I do do other things on the channel though I do a bit of retro gaming and things like that so I cover some older gaming systems I'm a fan of handheld gaming systems more than anything so that's what you tend to see me cover on the other channel just while I let this soak in a little bit this had a really bad stain on the front it looked like mud or something Still there, I'm not sure what it was, but the polish didn't eat into it. Um, it might be one I come back to with um, some lighter fluid. It's a little bit stronger, maybe, than Mr. Sheen. we've been enjoying the videos I'm not sure how many videos I've done now these exclusive ones this one I'm putting up now this actually will be number 20 working my way through the collection I think I've put up about 15 or so like archive ones which are it's looking at some of the best of my older content but I'd say we're still not even halfway through my collection yet <laughs> Thank you. 
But I think what will happen is that I'll put all my uh, new book pickups and cleaning videos onto this channel. And the other one will be more of a features channel, sort of where I do sort of a dedicated video on this subject or that subject. Maybe the occasional review and things like that. But all the cleaning stuff I think is going to end up on this one. Which I think will make more sense, to be honest, you know. Last handful now. So if you've made it to the end, thanks very much for watching the video today. I know sometimes people have said to me that they um, have to watch a video two or three times because they keep dropping off to sleep. That's absolutely fine. If that's you right now, sweet dreams. <laughs> but however, if you are here and you're just into the content and you're looking your way through, Check out any of the other chat other videos on my channel and you'll see similar sorts of stuff. God, that's, that's a lot of dirt there, it's really made a difference. It's kind of very very nice that. I just found there was a sticker on the front. So I'm gonna tactically Put a bit of polish on there. Just going to dab it in a bit. Give that a minute while it uh, does its thing. It's taken all that glue off. It's just an old price sticker. Lovely. Made a bit of a mess of the thing, but look that where that horrible sticker mess was has now completely come off. Lovely jubbly, as they say. Last few now. Trying to find a clean bit of a uh, duster here. I got a special brand new clean one out for you today. Since my last one was literally black, there wasn't. <laughs> we cleaned up so many books recently, uh, not just books, some other bits and pieces as well. There was nothing left. There was no clean spots left, I should say, on here. So.
right now these to be honest i think are too delicate they're too thin to rub like a normal paperback so i'm not going to do them this one's okay there but i'm not going to put any extra polish on because it isn't great glossiness glossy paper so i'm just going to use a little bit of what's left on the uh, duster just to give it that little bit of sheen So there you go, I hope you've enjoyed looking through my comic book related paperbacks. I've certainly enjoyed cleaning them and looking through them again, first time in a, in a couple of years at least. Um, if you have, as I said, do hit that subscribe button, it's going to really help me out. And I look forward to seeing you again next week with another video. Bye.